Hi everyone, Adrian from Living Holistic Health here, Geelong Nutritionist. Um, just wanted to talk to you a bit today about uh, the topic of antidepressant medications and this is particularly useful for people who are looking to come off these medications because we find that a lot of people who come through our clinic, um, that's one of the most commonly prescribed medications that they're on and when they talk to us they say that that's one of the most, the most important medications that they actually want to come off and stop using. So hopefully we can talk through a little bit about how this works and how nutritionally we can support this process. Now, from the outset, I'd just like to say it's very, very important when we're talking about any sort of medication to do with mental health, particularly antidepressants and others, that it is very important to, if you are wishing to come off these medications, to get some professional guidance and advice around that, and particularly from general practitioners or neurologists or psychiatrists or people who might have put you on that medication in the beginning, if you are wishing to come off this medication, then you do need to talk to them about it and work out some strategies for how you should best come off this. Because with many of these medications, the worst thing that you can possibly do is to just stop taking them completely. They do need to be tapered off because they're very, very strong and potent and they do really affect your brain chemistry, hopefully in a good way to help and support you with your mood. But if you're in a place where that you feel as though you do want to come off them, then you do need some professional guidance around with a medical practitioner to be able to withdraw from these drugs. Because the way that these medications work, I don't know if you know, but um, with, particularly with the serotonin um, style of drugs, of antidepressants like your Lexapros, etc., they work by basically blocking the, the chemical or the brain chemical serotonin from um, being lost in the connections between nerve cells. So we've got nerve cells in our brains that talk to each other and they have a little gap in between. And in between those nerve cells, our nerve cells send these little chemicals, messengers, and they're called neurotransmitters. And serotonin is one of those neurotransmitters, okay? So it goes across the gap from neuron, to, from nerve cell to nerve cell. And what a lot of these drugs do, the, particularly the antidepressants, is they actually stop that, um, uh, that message from being lost it gets held, I suppose, in that in that gap in between that gap, and that it stays around for longer than it normally would. So the serotonin stays within this this um, signaling process a little bit longer, and it creates the impression uh, for the body then that there's a little bit more excess serotonin. And serotonin is often described as a bit of a feel good or a feel good um, a neurotransmitter or hormone. Uh, it improves our mood, makes us feel good. So these drugs work by trying to stop um, the serotonin signal from going from leaving that. That, that message in between nerve cell to nerve cell hanging around a bit longer and making you feel a bit better. That's the way that they generally work. But what they also do is what the studies have shown is they actually deplete the levels over all of serotonin in the brain and the body. And if you think about it, that's because, you know, you're, you're, you're the, the, the messaging in between the nerve cells to do with serotonin is being interfered with, okay? So you're basically telling your body, look, you know, I'll, I've got quite a bit of this serotonin, you don't need to make quite as much anymore. So that the actual natural production of serotonin in your body will actually decrease over time, and but the the the, the rate at which you know the, the, the serotonin hangs around in the in, in between the nerves actually increases. So it's a bit of a bit of a two pronged approach there. So it's just very important to keep in mind that overall your store of serotonin will drop in the body, okay, in your brain in particular where it's being active. Now why this is important to realise is because if you just stop taking your antidepressants straight away. That little nerve connection there, the little signal in between the cells will stop. And so your body says, okay, cool, so now I need some more serotonin. And it goes looking for it, but it can't find it because the overall level of serotonin in your body has decreased over the period of time that you've been on that drug. So it's very, very important for you to realize, and that's why you can't just stop taking these drugs altogether. It needs to be a gradual tapered off process. Now, fortunately, there's plenty that can be done nutritionally to help support the body in the process of coming off the serotonin drugs, the, the, the antidepressants, and teaching your body how to make serotonin more effectively again. So you can do this through food to start with, and one of the best things that we try to look for with food is support our intake of an amino acid, a pro type of protein, called tryptophan. So tryptophan is found in a lot of foods like turkey and chicken, you might have heard of that before. Um, cottage cheese has also got a high tryptophan content. Uh, pumpkin seeds have a high tryptophan content as well. So get some advice around you know, some different foods that you can include more of in your diet that have a higher tryptophan content, which will then mean that your body, you'll be actually eating more tryptophan and hopefully making, helping your body make the serotonin that it needs because don't forget you've been on the antidepressants and the overall content of the serotonin in your body is low. 
So focusing on the on those on those um, high tryptophan containing foods is your first port of call. Okay. The second thing you need to do is also look at what are the, the mineral cofactors that actually help support your body make the serotonin from this 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 protein called tryptophan. And there's, there's three main things that you need to have be having, or four things that you really need to be having a, a good look at there. Um, firstly, is a mineral called zinc, and another mineral called magnesium. So you know, I've heard, I've talked about those before in previous videos. Zinc can be found in things like pumpkin seeds, and magnesium can be found in things like your leafy greens. You can substitute with those things as well. I won't talk about the supplements per se, other than make sure that you don't get the cheap ones. Make sure you get some advice about taking a good quality supplement if you're looking to do that. So your zinc and magnesium, what they do is they help actually help convert the serotonin into um, melatonin, so that's going to help you sleep. So melatonin is your sleeping hormone, and that actually is actually produced from serotonin. So you need adequate levels of serotonin to make enough melatonin to help you sleep. And that's very often one of the side effects when people come off medications, these antidepressant medications, is that they don't realize that you know, one of the first things is that they've got low levels of serotonin to begin with, and as a result, they're not going to be making enough melatonin, so therefore their sleep is going to be really disturbed. It's a very common side effect for people coming off these medications. So you want to be able to, as I said, get the, the tryptophan through your food, first and foremost, so you've got the stuff there to make serotonin, and then you want these mineral cofactors like your zincs and your magnesiums to help convert that serotonin into melatonin to help you sleep. Okay, that's the second, that's the second thing. Also, you, crucially, you want to be looking at a good range of B vitamins. So if you get a, good, like a really good quality B vitamin supplement, that can sometimes help. But if you're having good quality protein-rich foods and plenty of nuts and seeds as snacks in between, that's going to make sure that you've got an adequate supply of B vitamins in your diet and leafy green vegetables too. Don't forget those. Got plenty of folate in them there. That's going to make sure you've got an adequate supply of B vitamins and you may, you may need to supplement top up as well to help convert that, again, that serotonin into melatonin and make sure you've got enough um, in your, to help replete the stores and teach your body to make it again. Okay, so very important. Another good thing to have a bit of a look at too is vitamin C. So vitamin C is another integral part of the process converting that serotonin through into melatonin from the tryptophan. So vitamin C is something you can find a lot of, you know, your citrus, um, fruits and vegetables. Um, you can also find it in the leafy greens, your kales, etc. have got a high vitamin C content. It's a water-soluble vitamin, so try not to boil um, or you know, if you're just going to cook the kale, lightly steam it so you can retain a lot of that vitamin C content. Very, very important. And lastly, another mineral that people don't often think about is iron. So if you're iron deficient, don't come off antidepressants straight away, okay? You need to get your iron levels checked and make sure that they're sufficient because iron is a very, very important cofactor in this entire process. And if iron is an issue for you, then of course you can get a good quality supplement again or get it through some foods, you know, our, our red meats, etc. It can be higher in iron or you can go to leafy green options with a little bit of lemon juice to help absorb that iron. Um, that, that's also an idea as well. But do make sure that you do have adequate levels of iron. That's a very, very important part of the process to make sure that your body can start making the serotonin from the tryptophan that you're getting through your diet um, to replace the levels up to, the, to where you need to go. And lastly, I'd also just say, just think to yourself in terms of when you first went on that medication, what was it for? So very often it can be the result of maybe a very, very stressful event. So it might have been the death of a partner or somebody in the family. Um, it might have been a relationship breakup. Um, there might have been some financial pressures. It can be a range of things that cause you to go on this medication in the first place. And just ask yourself, has that been resolved? So is that event or the reason why you were on put on that medication in the first place, has that been dealt with? And if it hasn't been dealt with, then deal with that first. So for some people, it might be that they were very, very inflamed. So the inflammation, there's a lot of inflammation in their body and that needs to be addressed first. For other people, it may be that they, there's a genetic issue that there's this in the family that stops them making and converting their neurotransmitters, those brain chemicals properly. And if that hasn't been addressed, that needs to be addressed first. And there may be a variety of other issues, but whatever the reason was that you were put onto these medications in the first place, make sure you ask yourself the question, has that been adequately addressed first? And if it has, well, then you can go through and um, follow the guidelines that I've given you there in terms of food, of your food, I beg your pardon. But make sure you are consulting and you're in close contact with your medical practitioner during the process. You can come and see us, of course. We can give you the nutritional advice and the plans to be able to support your body through the process and assist you with the withdrawals and teach your body again how to naturally make the serotonin and convert it from your food 
that's really, really, um, you know, something that we can offer or your another practitioner might be able to offer as well. But do make sure you're getting the advice because it is a mental health issue and we do want you to make sure you've got the support around you to ease you through the transition so that you can do it successfully and not harmfully. Okay, so hopefully there's some guidelines there on some effective ways that you can consider if you want to come off these medications, how to do so. And there is some more information about some of the underlying causes on our website, so please feel free to have a look. If you've got any questions, please send us a message or give us a call on the phone number. Happy to answer and help you in any way that we possibly can. Okay, antidepressants. Hopefully there's some effective strategies for you to help you come off those medications if you wish to. Thank you.